Okay, in this video, I'll go over three more problems from section 5.7, 23, 25, and 29. So 23, these three problems are all uh, now dealing with definite integrals. So let's look at to see um, what, uh, what we can use to apply the rule, um, the, to apply the appropriate rule. Okay. Uh, we can see that this is in the form of arctangent because we don't see the square root. Uh, so we can go ahead and uh, get the setup um, so that we can apply the arctangent rule. Let's get the parentheses squared to show up here and the parentheses squared to show up there as well. So 1 will remain as a 1, but 4x squared, I would need to adapt it as 2x parentheses inside the parentheses because I see that if I work through 2x quantity squared, I'll get 4x squared. So now I have um, the necessary form in order for us to find our a and our u value. Our a value is the constant, so our a is 1. Our u value is uh, always has a variable inside, so our u value is what's inside the parentheses, the 2x. Find the derivative, du over dx equals 2. Solve for dx, which is du over 2. And we make our substitution um, into from x's into a's and u's. So 1 over a squared plus u squared times dx gets replaced with du over 2. Uh, nothing needs to be canceled out, but we do need to make sure we keep uh, track of that, that coefficient. So this 2 in the denominator can be pulled out as 1 half. So now this matches up nicely with our integral rule for arctangent. So we have 1 half times 1 over a arctangent of u over a. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and replace the a value with 1. I'm going to hold on to the, this u value because this u value we're going to plug in with the upper and lower bounds. Okay. I'm going to go ahead also to convert the upper and lower bounds to be in terms of u because right now these upper and lower bounds are in terms of x. So the conversion that we're going to use is this right here, u is equal to 2x. This uh, equation relates the u value to the x. So if I uh, plug in square root of 3 over 2 in for x, I'll get 2 times square root of 3 over 2. The 2's cancel out, and we get square root of 3. Uh, if I plug in 0 in for x, I'll get 2 times 0, which is 0. So our new lower bound remains a 0. So our new upper bound is square root of 3. Our new lower bound is 0. Now we can plug in. Plug the upper bound in for u. So we get 1 half arctangent of square root of 3 minus, now plug in the lower bound and for the u, arctangent of 0. Arctangent of square root of 3, when is tangent equal to square root of 3, and that's going to be in, at pi over 3. Okay, we're only looking at values in, um, in the first quadrant here. And arctangent of 0, when is tangent equal to 0, and tangent is equal to 0 at 0. So 1 half pi times pi over 3 is simply pi over 6 minus 0, so that drops out. So we simply are simply left with pi over 6. All right, 25. We have the definite integral uh, of arc sine of x over square root of 1 minus x squared from 0 to 1 over root 2. And we see something we haven't seen in, in a while, which is arc sine. So let's recall the rule for arc sine. Arc sine's derivative is u prime over square root of 1 minus u squared. And if we look at this form, uh, if we let the u value be arc sine of x, then the derivative will, uh, will most likely be the form that will cancel out with this denominator that's, um, that we would need to get rid of if we want this top to be the u value. So let's try that. u value is arc sine of x. Our derivative is u prime over square root of 1 minus u squared. So our u value is... Um, x, so the derivative of x is 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. So we have our derivative, solve for dx, which is um, dx equals square root of 1 minus x squared times du. We make our substitutions, arc sine gets replaced with u, denominator stays there for now, dx gets replaced with square root of 1 minus x squared du. We see the square root of 1 minus x squared cancels out nicely, so we simply have integral of u du which is power rule will be u squared over 2. Now, once we found the antiderivative, we still need to evaluate between our upper and lower bounds. 
So let's convert since we did go through use substitution. Um, we're going to use this conversion to uh, get from our x value, our lower and upper bounds, to be in terms of u. So plug in 0 in for x. So arc sine of 0 is still going to remain the 0. Um, if x is 1 over root 2, now 1 over root 2 is the same thing as root 2 over 2, which may be uh, easier for us to recognize. Uh, arc sine of root 2 over 2, when is sine equal to root 2 over 2? And that's going to occur at pi over 4. So that's our new lower bound, our new upper bound. So upper bound plugs in first, pi over 4 quantity squared over 2, minus, now plug in the lower bound, 0 in for u, and 0 over 2 is just 0, that's going to wash out. So we sim uh, simplify this by squaring it, so pi squared over 16 times 1 half, and that'll get us to pi squared over 32. All right, 29, another definite integral problem. We have sine x over 1 plus x squared, definite integral from 0 to, um, uh, from pi over 2 to pi. And um, now if you look, this actually matches up nicely with uh, the arctangent rule. All right, we don't, we don't see the square root, and we see something that we can split up into a squared and u squared. So our a squared, um, we have parentheses squared here, we have parentheses squared here. The cosine is already set up so that we can have cosine x quantity squared. And then the 1 is simply 1 squared. So we can identify our u value and our a value. Our a value is 1, it's the constant. Our u value is what's inside the parentheses. Uh, remember our u value always has an x or has, always has a variable um, as part of um, the u value. So our u is cosine of x. So our derivative for cosine is negative sine of x. Solve for dx, we get du over negative sine of x. Okay, we start making our substitutions. Sine x will stay for now. a squared plus u squared times dx gets replaced with du over negative sine x. The sine x cancels out. We gotta be careful. There's a negative that we gotta keep track of, so we pull the negative out in front, a negative one. So this matches up nicely now with our arctangent rule which is 1 over a arctangent of u over a. I'm going to go ahead and replace the a value with 1, um, but I do need to hold on to that u value because I'm going to plug in the upper and lower bounds in. I'm also keeping track of this negative as part of the, um, the antiderivative. Okay. Let's convert. Our upper and lower bounds are in terms of x. We're going to convert using um, uh, this uh, equation here, u, this assigned value for u, which is cosine of x. Plug pi over 2 in for x, and if we plug in the lower bounds, we get cosine of pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Next, we can plug in the upper bound. Upper bound is pi, cosine of pi is negative 1. So our new upper bound is negative 1, our new lower bound is 0. Okay. Plug in the upper bound first, negative 1 in for u, and then minus, now plug in 0 in for u. Okay. When is arctangent equal to negative 1? And that's going to occur at negative pi over 4, okay, in the fourth quadrant. So negative pi over 4 plus 0. Uh, and we have a negative out here in front, so two negatives cancels out to be just pi over 4.